the initial message that should be passed along here, mu of e, is 1 for all possible settings of that variable. In other words, mu of e is equal to 1 for all e. What we end up with then is that at f3, following my, my sum product rule, uh, mu of d is equal to the sum over everything except d, which is just e, f3 of d and e times mu e, but mu e is just 1. So I end up with the same with the calculation I had. So the key thing about factory graphs is that all the variables within the factory graph are not observed. So this is like you have some hidden obscure model that has all of these variables that you don't know the settings of. But if a variable is observed, then you know the exact value that that variable takes. What you do if a variable is observed is substitute the observed value in all attached factors. hidden variable x and an observation of that hidden variable y. This factor will be f of y given x, but we can see y. So what we will end up doing, let's say y is equal to y star. So for instance, we've seen this um, in the binary symmetric channel, let's say. We have a binary variable x, which can be 0 or 1 y is what we observe, which could either be x or the flip of x. So if we see y, what we do is we get rid of y, this comes out of the factor graph, and then we just substitute y star. So we will end up with a factor graph that consists only of unobserved variables. Now there's a subtlety here, what, what's really going on is um, if you observe y, another way to interpret it is that you attach a factor there which, can, which contains um, a delta function where y is equal to y star. And it ends up being the same thing when you pass the messages. It's equivalent to if you just substituted y star in here and took y out. But the easiest thing to do is just Take y star, substitute in there, and then treat that as treat this as just a factor in x that happens to have this setting. <coughs> now, um, a consequence of this: this does not respect um, the rules of probability necessarily, but it turns out that what you can do is um, you may need to. normalize at the end. Um, so the only thing that this doesn't respect is normalization. And by normalize at the end, I mean like, for instance, if I had probability of B, and I had that as a function of a bunch of messages, let's say mu1 of B and mu2 
two of B. In other words, here's B at the end. And I have mu one of B and mu two of B coming in. Uh, that product might not necessarily be a probability, but in order to make it a probability, all I need to do is normalize. In other words, force the sum of it to be one. So what this does is it forces, it divides by the sum over mu1 and mu, uh, the product of mu1 and mu2. So therefore the sum of this now over b is equal to 1. So now it is a probability. Now oh, this brings up my final point, like the final rule, which is at the end, Possibly normalized. Normalized if necessary. And it's easy to see if the normalization is necessary. You just take the sum. If that sum is not equal to 1, then normalize. In other words, at the end, we saw this. This is exactly what I have down here. We had two messages. One incoming here, uf1 and uf3. Two. And at the end, all we did was we took the product. And again, I remind you as long as the factor graph is cycle free. Exact probabilities of each individual variable, we actually call these uh, the marginal probabilities. So for each individual variable, the marginal probability is just the probability of that individual variable. Exact marginal probability. shame that we had to rush through this. The factor graphs are very interesting. They apply to all kinds of different models, and it's actually not too hard to take these rules, expand them, and see that, in fact, yes, they are true, that this actually works. It's, it's basically all the distributed rule. Um, this works because um, um, uh, summation is distributed over multiplication, and so therefore you can form summation locally, and then collect the terms later. So um, my, the title for this section was Factor Graphs and the Sum Product Algorithm. That's actually the same as the title of a famous paper written in 2001 um, by um, three people, one of whom was my PhD supervisor. Um, that basically uh, explains all of these rules in extreme detail. There's also been quite a huge body of literature uh, expanding on it since then. So if you're sufficiently interested, you can certainly go and look that up.